right, so we are out here again today. Yes. Fixing our fence. Okay, what so, are we doing? What we did is we are running two more lines. So you remember we had four lines and then the ribbon up here. Yeah. Uh, and we are now running a fifth line and a sixth line. Got it. Because. Why are we doing this? Yeah. Why? When we walked the fence line after a snow, yes. it was easy for us to see where the deer were getting in and where the deer were leaving. Okay. And we, we definitely saw that they were both coming in and going out. And we knew this was going to happen. What we found is that the deer were jumping the outside fence, and uh -huh. so they were in the little alleyway here. Yep. And then they were just stepping through. Stepping through. The inside fence whenever there was a distance of like 16 inches or 18 yeah. inches. So we had, we had these, we had the bottom one, and then the third one, and then the fifth one, that's what we had. And now we've put in the second row from the bottom and the fourth row from the bottom. Right. So they're closer together. Now they're more like eight inches apart, right? right? Okay. We did see, here's a fun fact. What's the we fun fact? We did see that in some places the deer were jumping the outside fence or stepping through the yep. outside. They were doing something. They were yep. getting in this little uh, alleyway. And then they were squeezing underneath the barbed wire yes. to get out. Yep. And uh, so that was good because that gave us a sense of how close they had to be together before they were irritated. So I'm thinking that this is uh, this is going to deter a lot more. Yeah, this I'm feeling better about this. We, we also, in walking the whole perimeter, we didn't see a single uh, area where there was jumping from the outside over both fences so we've Correct. kind of eliminated that yes. part at least for now yes um but as we walk this where we we are thinking probably have to run um one more wire between those two wires and then as we look here yeah they're gonna crawl because as we cl as we close up uh, yeah you climb through <laughs> and, and as I we're do it, a graceful deer can certainly do it yes and as we're <laughs> as we're making these uh less uh easy then they're going to take the next easier and it's going to be that big gap yeah so steve yeah we've been out here for i don't know a while yes. and we've been running our new yeah what's it called it's a pulling line okay and it looks like this. So it's uh, kind of thin uh -huh. and uh, translucent in the middle. Uh -huh. And then a ribbon of this on either side, this orange. orange and that's uh, thicker. Yeah, that's just probably just for visibility, don't you it, think? Yeah, but, but for our purposes, as you pull it, it, it twists. Uh -huh. It's twice as strong as the electric line that we ran. And we can tie the knots because it's it it holds on itself yeah. much better. Yeah, we're able to stretch it much much tighter. Yeah. So and it's a fraction of the cost. These obviously would would not be able to be electrified. Right. But we're trying to avoid electrifying the whole thing. Yeah. And we've got seven point three miles. <laughs> of electric uh, fencing yeah. wire. So I'm not too concerned about not having the ability to, right. to do we that. We could electrify the fence yes. if we wanted to, and it'd be plenty electric. Right. And so this this whole hodgepodge here yeah. that you see is going through the seasonal creek. Right, right, and which is so, just a nightmare of topography. Yeah, but I think we've done a really good job. You know what it looks like? It sort of looks like we're building a harp out here. That is exactly what we are doing. <laughs> there you go.
So this right here is a problem. The rope is moving, this rope here, because Steve is still stringing it. But you see how it is, you see how it's rubbing against this tree? That's bad news, because one thing I've learned about this rope is it frays quite easily. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to fix that. I'm gonna take this nail and I'm gonna drive it at an angle into this tree so that the rope rubs against my smooth nail rather than against the tree bark, which will fray it. So now you see that I've put the um, nail in at an angle so it kind of pushes that wire out a little bit more. They do actually make um, insulators that go into trees for exactly this kind of reason, but I don't have any of those. So I'm fixing it with a smooth nail instead. Okay, so what's happening here, Steve-O? We're gonna pull this uh, corner post a little tighter. We know... Yeah, it's got quite a bit of a lean in it. Yeah, well, we are fully aware that now that we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, and soon to be seven wires yeah. coming across here, we're now pulling our corners like we haven't ever done before. Uh -huh. right? So I'm just going to temporarily put this so that we can pull this corner a little bit snugger. Is this pull line really strong enough to do this? Well, it's supposed to hold, what, 200 and something pounds? Okay. So again, is this a permanent fix? No. Is it what we have out in the woods right now? Yes. <laughs> And this project is at the point of, do we have it out in the woods with us? Yes, then that's the solution. Got it. Yep. 